We are cutting in live here, folks. Sal Lord, Jerry Field. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We got the Bulldogs versus the Sentinels of Smithfield right now. All Bulldogs. 2 nothing. I know that's what you wanted to hear if you couldn't see it. Everybody knows the implications of this ball game uh, emotionally, mainly at this portion of the season. But in reality, it's a heck of a barometer. If you don't know Smithfield, you didn't know the Bulldogs last season. They beat him in the state championship by a score of 9-8. to eight. They met him in the regular season, went to overtime, beat him by a score of 9-8. to eight. So if this isn't you don't tell me this isn't a hungry Sentinel team. Right now, all Bulldogs, I am the voice, Greg Marino, alongside producer owner, uh, Ben Barber. We got Dave DeAngelis and Lisa behind the lens. Bulldogs have had pressure on since the punch. We are jumping in. 522 to go. Quarter number one. And we have a two-second delay. It is Sentinel possession. They are in the green, right to left in Bulldog territory right now. Just a big emotional, emotional game this is for the Bulldogs. It really is. I mean, it's game three of the season. Uh, neither team has a loss. This Sentinel team is no joke. I did a little bit of research on them, as much as I can with Smithfield so far away. Um, all jokes aside, uh, they can play. And a lot of their big scores from last year are still here. And a swing and a miss gives the Bulldog possession. We're moving. Fazaro's done a nice job of flipping sides of the field, as has Jake Karen. Bulldogs with it on the move again. Pat just over shoots Perkins. And the Bulldogs try to run it down, and they will have a we'll have substitution and will set up their offense again on the far side. So the Bulldogs let the offense set up. And on the run he goes. 13 for Zaro and a shot just wide right. So the Bulldogs have had, I mean, they really have spread it out so so well this season. Uh, they have a lot of good top goal scores, I would say, but uh, uh, none, no one's had a better season than the freshman Ian Morissette, really. I mean, he's got seven goals in the number. Oh, behind the head shot there. Nice shot attempts uh, by Morissette himself there, as I was speaking. The big, excuse me, he's got six goals, but the even bigger number is seven assists to top that off. And uh, the Bulldogs have spread it out in both games. Six different scorers, weapons galore, and the ball knocks loose by Smithfield. You know this is going to be a physical battle. We've seen it already. And the Bulldogs with a big turnover in the Sentinels' ends. Oh, the Sentinels with a turnover. Gives the ball back to the Bulldogs. And Fizarro has it. Bulldogs start their offense. And he makes a move to the middle. Another one to the right. He's got room. Shot. And a deflection. <laughs> The goalie for Smithfield made a couple nice saves uh, before we could get on. I was clearly watching. Number two with a nice moves. And he's going to have to reset it back, and that'll be more set with it. Um, but the goalie for the Sentinels had a couple beautiful saves, or else the Bulldogs would have more. Down to 315 in the first. This is exactly what you want to do as the Bulldogs. Oh, pass to the middle. Just can't hang on. And the Sentinels will scoop that up. On the run they go, and avoiding hits, but to the turn he goes. Avoided a big collision there, and uh, got whistled for something the Bulldogs did, so on the move, there'll be a couple subs on Smithfield. Bulldogs take the penalty. The Smithfield will have possession. I mean, this one's been X'd off and circled and highlighted, I would say, especially for Smithfield, but for the Bulldogs, too, uh, since the schedule came out. I know that, certainly. Bulldogs have been on attack more this game. Uh, to start this thing off, we are still in quarter number one. Just under three to go. Smithfield with it, number 32. And uh, their lead scorers, they spread it out pretty well, but uh, looking for some numbers. Number 14 uh, as well as number seven are their top goal scorers. Number seven with it right there. And that would be Boudreaux. And it rolls to the far side, and they are unable to save it. Bulldogs will take the turnover. But see how quickly they uh, send them switch sides. They do a nice job in transition. Obviously, the Bulldogs do as well. Bulldogs' defense is uh, it's really their key right now. I mean, they play a physical style defense led by Garofola and uh, crew around him. And uh, 
obviously Cassidy between the pipes is just enormous. Sentinels have it on the far side as the lights are on here at or Jerry Field on one of the nicer nights in, in the booth anyway. <laughs> there is no drops of rain to view. Um, the players have had to play in some rough conditions in the past couple of weeks, all sports. Just got done doing the baseball game yesterday. They moved them to 2-0 and on the season. The girls across 3-0 on the season. Things are... Uh, Bumping and grooving here in Wesley at the start of the spring. Around back, settles. And he's quick. Comes around himself. Bulldog defense steps up, forces him out, and forces the reset completely. He doesn't want to give it up. He's going to fight the middle. Spins into the double team, and the Bulldogs force the ball on the ground. That's just great defense by the Bulldogs all around. He did not want to give that thing up, and uh, everywhere he turned, there was a white jersey. Sentinels again from the outside will restart things. Number um, 44 for the Sentinels. And he actually has, he's on attack with Tremblay. And he's got four goals on the season as well. well methodical. We got 50 seconds to go. Quarter number one. And uh, in whose body they go. Look at the stick movement by the Bulldog defense. I love it. I mean, they're quick, and they're big, and they're strong, and they and Smithfield can answer. Don't, don't get me wrong. but And they're going to that one right there. Might get a whistle, and certainly does from behind. Yeah, that one certainly is a – that one was deserving of the whistle, and off he had number 14, a little over a little over anxious on that one. Uh, he'll head out, and one player will come in. Two out, one in. Advantage goes to the green. Can't argue with folks. I love physicality. That one really wasn't kind of on the line. It was just pretty much aggressive. Set the tone, a tone setter, I guess, here at home. And around they go. Again, the Bulldogs defense inside. Physical and fast. And around, they're going to get there and they're going to score. On the quick wraparound, up over the shoulder, tight pocket, high right, and the penalty proves costly for the Bulldogs with just about 12 seconds left in quarter number one. 11 now. They uh, cut the lead in half and get on the board. This is going to be a ball game, folks. I had a feeling all day long. I've been excited. So I'm not going to lie. I just kind of circled this thing. Uh, I know this is a Bulldog squad who's got, uh, got their uh, sights on repeating, and I know this is a Smithfield squad who's got their sights on revenge, and this right here is the first matchup of the two. Uh, is there a chance they meet later? Yeah, but that's a long ways away and who knows by then. So every effort goes into this for a little rematch right here. Two to one and I mean I have a feeling that the head to head uh, last year had, uh, had meaning to it and uh, it could as well this year. On top of that, this is a tough three days for the Bulldogs, folks. They play. That's quarter number one in the books. Bulldogs two, Sentinels one. We'll bring you more right after the break. Hi, this is Dan from Lathrop Insurance. In this challenging insurance environment, Lathrop Insurance can be your beacon in the storm to help you find the coverage you need at the right price. Now, more than ever, you need a partner in the insurance industry that can work with multiple carriers to make sure you have the right coverage at the right price. Lathrop Insurance carries home, auto, and business insurance and can be reached at 401-596-2525. We've been supporting the local community since 1939 and we look forward to working with you. Experience local excellence with Roof Right Roofing in Charlestown, Rhode Island. With over 40 years of unmatched expertise, Roof Right specializes in architectural shingles and holds the prestigious title of GAF Master Elite Installers. Known for their commitment to the community and support for local initiatives, Roof Right is your trusted partner for all of your home's roofing needs. Call today for a free estimate at 401 212 4140. Ever thought about leveling up your fitness game in a fun and meaningful way? Kiefer's Martial Arts on Granite Street has everything you're looking for. Kickboxing, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and of course, adult karate. It's not just about getting fit, it's about building your self-confidence, discipline, and that unstoppable feeling you get from all your hard work. Stop in to Kiefer's Martial Arts today to sign up. 
Are you looking for a fresh cut in Westerly? Step into Rio's Barber Shop in Granite Plaza. Whether it's a classic trim or a trendy new look, we've got you covered. Experience the perfect cut for every age and style in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. At Rio's, it's not just a haircut, it's an experience. Visit Rio's Barber Shop in the Granite Plaza in Westerly or give us a call to schedule your appointment at 401-315-2208. Your style, our craft, Rio's Barber Shop. Hot summers and cold winters can be unbearable, but DNV Mechanical has the solution for you. As a Mitsubishi Diamond dealer, we provide energy efficient and personalized comfort solutions for your home. Our experienced technicians will install your new system quickly and efficiently, ensuring your complete satisfaction. Don't suffer through another season of discomfort. Contact DNV Mechanical today for a personalized ductless mini split installation that fits your lifestyle. DNV Mechanical, your comfort is our top priority. The Thirsty Beaver Hometown Pub and Grub in Dunn's Corners is your ultimate destination for refreshing drinks, delectable dishes, and memorable moments with family and friends. Enjoy live music, DJ trivia every Wednesday night, and we're now the official spot to come watch and root for your favorite Westerly High School sports teams. The Thirsty Beaver, located at 265 Post Road, Spindrift Village, Westerly. What's going on, Westerly? It's Patrick down here at the Wireless Zone at Dunn's Corners, Verizon Authorized Retailer. And right now is the best time to come on in and get a brand new phone. We are offering our hottest new 5G phone, the iPhone 15, the S24 Pixel 8 for free with a trade-in. And the best part is 5G is finally coming down here to Westerly and the surrounding areas. So make sure you're on the best network and get it for free when you're on the right plan. Come see us at 224 Post Road. And welcome back, folks. Sal or Jerry Field on this midweek or Wednesday. Get you over the hump for the rest of the week, folks. And let me tell you, we got a game on our hands. We knew we would coming in. Smithfield Sentinels from way across the state. And the Wesley Bulldogs, the defending state champion Bulldogs. Now, that came at the hands of the green here, the Smithfield Sentinels. They have not forgotten. We knew there was going to be physicality. We knew both teams are fast. And uh, we know both teams are highly talented. Top two teams in the league, uh, followed closely by Narragansett. And uh, when we get a free moment here, we'll speak of that because the Bulldogs have a tough three days. In the middle, number two for the Bulldogs, Gervasini. And Smithfield comes up with it, the senior, but he loses it. Fazaro gets a stick. Now he scoops back up. Clean stick play by both squads. Just vigorous, vigorous contact. And uh, he's fighting through everything. The ball finally comes loose. And Garofolo comes up with it. And he retreats and flips it to Cassidy who falls to the ground. No whistles. And if they come up with it, they'll have an open netter. And they do. And essentially an open netter. Cassidy can't make his way back around the pipes. Bulldogs on their heels that whole time. Now I know there was a penalty originally on the Bulldogs. They were going to lose it if they got possession. But I don't know how they got knocked down on the back there with nothing. And just like that, we are 27 seconds in quarter number two. They scored with 11 left in quarter number one. That is uh, 38 seconds it took uh, Smithfield to make up that entire two-goal gap. And and uh, we are back to even here, folks. Wow. And now we have number 29 in the middle of this giving in the world, Jake Perkins. So at the moment, some spots being uh, exposed here for the Bulldogs. And on the move they go. Bulldogs move. Shot. Bounce it up over the goal. It'll be Bulldogs possession. Shot by Williams. And a spin move in and a stick move by the defense prevents the shot. Bulldogs lost the stick entirely, and uh, there is no whistle. So right now the whistle's in favor of the green, and uh, the Bulldogs just gave up a two-goal lead in 30 seconds, in, in three quarters of a minute. So momentum on the side of the visitor. A good crowd on hand at LJ Field. Like I said, we're now officially in the back towards the week, back end of the week here. Uh, but what a big game. And the Bulldogs have one day to recover here. It's either recovering from a big victory, uh, recovering their bodies, or recovering and uh, fixing some things up. Because they have Narragansett after just one short day uh, on the road. And Narragansett is the only other, if I'm looking correctly up, the only other unbeaten team in the division. They sit at 2-0 overall. 
2-0 and in the league going into tonight. So the Bulldogs with Smithfield, rest day, and Narragansett. Uh, that really tests where you're at uh, early in the season. I'd rather see them early in the season, frankly, uh, regardless of how it turns out. But uh, and Cassidy, a nice stick save, got to watch from behind. And man, is Smithfield persistent. Uh, we're seeing a lot of what we're not, we, used to, we usually see out of the Bulldogs here, out of the Smithfield green team. And uh, f- flick away by the Bulldogs, the length of the field, and Smithfield will take possession. On the far depths of Jerry Field. And with our old lights, literally, he would have been in the dark. You would not have been able to see him at some hours of a late weekend game. And that's going to go out of bounds. Should the Bulldogs' possession? No, I'm wrong. It's Smithfield's possession again. So what was all Bulldogs attack early or throughout the first? No, Bulldogs have it. Throughout the first, uh, swung quickly, hopefully briefly. We're just into quarter number two. And Bulldogs looked ahead before he had the ball. And quick turnover back in the zone. And it is deflected up in the air. And uh, out of bounds, it'll be Smithfield's ball, I think. Yep, from the far side. Uh, no, they didn't deflect it. Just errant. And the Bulldogs up the field. They go with it. And that one's picked off by Smithfield. At the 40, and forward it goes. Well, across the field, number 14 has it for Smithfield, and they're passing well. Turns inside, that's loose. And the Bulldogs scoop it on the second try. Up the far side, the length of the field, number 14 for the Bulldogs. Well, it starts, and he flips it ahead. Number eight for the Bulldogs, Mason Vitorino. And it's to the center. Gervasini has it. A lot of youth on the field here right now for the Bulldogs. It's going to be a substitution, far side. And they're kind of waiting for him. Now I hear a whistle. And the Bulldogs, things seem to be heading the other direction now. And they're on the run. On the move they go. Smithfield, length of the field already. Winds up, fires. Nice save by Cassidy. But man, unabated all the way uh, down the field. Wound up and... Laser on Cassidy. Up over the top. And they'll work their way around the perimeter and a loose. And that pops loose. Can the Bulldogs capitalize? And they try and they come out maybe with it. And Gervasini is the one coming out with it. It's a sophomore. And that ball back and across midfield now. Number 34 for the Bulldogs, Aiden Marone. Flips it. Vitorito to the middle to Gervasini. Two to two here. Eight to go, quarter number two. And the flip under in and nice shot attempt by Gervasini, man. For a sophomore boy, he's gonna he is a weapon already. And we have a timeout on the field. Second quarter. Well, 11 seconds to go in the first in sentence. And all Smithfield, we are knotted up two to two here. 7.39 to go. We'll take a quick break.
Only it would have been probably five. Uh, he made three like tremendous saves. He made more than three, but he saved three on real solid goal opportunities by the Bulldogs. And uh, Bulldogs, likewise, Cassidy always saves goal opportunities. Uh, Bulldogs defense kind of hung up behind the goal in one of them, making their way back around. And that was the second goal. Since then, it's been about 50 50. Here we go. And on the move are the Sentinels with it. They are in the green. And they do a nice job of coming back to get that one. And 15 flips it. And. It's loose behind the goal. Sentinel's able to flip it back live and uh, should be scooped up by the Bulldogs. They have it. And it seems to be that they're always letting it bounce once and that's letting it, the Bulldogs, that is, and that's allowing uh, this fast Sentinel's team just enough time to catch up to the play. Uh, and it really is hindering things. I mean, the Sentinels are catching them clean and allowing other players to flow with the play. And the Bulldogs have, have that tendency tonight only at the moment. Uh, the ball's hitting the turf one time and they're gathering possession after that. Uh, but that one hop makes a difference. Sentinels have it, number seven. One of their lead goal scorers, Boudreaux, if not their lead goal scorer. It's getting dark in here. Let me... And the fact that this match is early big man, number 44, on the perimeter, it's, an er it's a good barometer early, and uh, you have a lot of time to work from here. And nice spin move, uses his big body, and a beautiful save! Low left pocket by Cassidy, and boy, boy, oh boy, number 44, he can use his body well. Lex Trembley on attack as a senior, and I have him somewhere that rings a bell. I gotta have him highlighted somewhere, I'm certain of that. Um, yeah, he's got four goals on the season so far, so he's definitely an offensive weapon for them. Boudreau with eight. I know I say his name a lot. Uh, number seven. And uh, the goal-scoring leader is number 14 for the Sentinels. And I haven't had said his name too much. And they work their way around here. Sentinels playing in no sense of urgency at the moment uh, since they've tied things up. Uh, we have a whistle slowing things down here. A couple looks like uh, Fizarro's going to head. Uh, that's just a straight switch. And now it looks to me like Gervasini is going to... All right, looks like Fizarro got a penalty. Gervasini is substituted, and we're going to get started. Five forty-five to go. Quarter number two. I know we're back in action on Friday, folks. Uh, before the end of this production, I'll tell you where. And oh, there's number fourteen. Speak of the devil for Sentinels. Nice defense. Bulldogs everywhere in the middle of that one. Well, again, that's that quick scoop up by the Sentinels. They have advantage in scoops or whatever they call it in lacrosse. I know there is a category. And that pass just errant, and the Bulldogs will happily take the turnover. Try to flip sides of the field a little bit in the second half of this second quarter. <laughs> and up over the top it goes. Number 14 has it for the Bulldogs. That's more set the freshman. And coming out the gates, as I said, as a freshman, thrown right into the fire. And boy, is he a, he's a major contributor in both of his first two games. And, uh, when that happens, then you become uh, relied upon. That's a whole new. The Bulldogs, however, using a big rotation, even here tonight. No sense of panic on the side of Wesley. Been no scoring at all since uh, 11 and a half minutes to go in this quarter, and that goes wide. And cuts up inside, nice move, jump shot, and that is a score, Bulldogs, Aiden Marone makes the move, jump shot to the back of the net, and the Bulldogs take the lead. Westerly three, Smithfield two, and that ignites the crowd a little bit here at Salon Jimmy Field. And uh, I always say last five minutes and the first five minutes of uh, each half are huge. And uh, right now the Bulldogs, the Sentinels, did their thing at the end of the first quarter and the start of the second. Uh, now let's see if the Bulldogs can uh, close out the half uh, with momentum here. Going into the, uh, well, not the locker room, but 
halftime break. Sentinels are watching far side. We got a couple substitutes. They'll flip immediately. Number six, Ryan Cavanaugh, sophomore, flips it over to number 14. That being their goal scoring leader. Sentinels work their way just up over the top on the far side. And they work their way around the perimeter. And to the top, big number 44, Trebley. And he flips it around. And they're working, looking. Bulldogs doing well. They do very well with their feet. They don't give up much ground off the pick. Not much room, but he's not afraid to shoot. Spin move inside. Three players had to get it through. It went wide left. I don't know who it hit. It definitely hit a Bulldog, well defended. Um, I don't know if it got through to Cassidy or not, but Smithfield will retain possession here. 3.46 to go now in the half here at Saddle or Jerry Field. And the shot, mount shot scores all the way around. He went sort of untouched just inside the perimeter. Jacob Boudreau, and uh, he ties things up, man, in a matter of about, holy cow, not long. Didn't take him long at all, Boudreau. Let me see. Coming into today, uh, in three games, you got eight goals, and that's at least one today. I don't know who scored exactly their three, but that not things back up at three. 3.34 to go, half number one. Smithfield Westerly, varsity lacrosse. It doesn't get much more high-powered than this, folks. We knew we were going to get exactly what we're getting. And I honestly think the Bulldogs aren't playing at their best. I'm not going to... I'm not going to make any if or buns about it. They can, uh, on different nights, they uh, complete their passes a little bit better than they have. That's a little late hit outside, far side. Is there a whistle? Uh, there sure certainly is. Should have been. And there's not. Smithfield has it still. And 3-3. Three, three. Smithfield in the green with possession. Only two goals separated them last year in two games combined, one costing them a ring. Bulldogs certainly came in prepared, evenly matched, and at that, I do believe that I've seen them at a higher level even prior to this, so... Number six with it, near corner. And they're just looking for an opening. Trying to create number seven. Passes back out. And it hits the ground momentarily. And that's what we've been seeing a lot of in the white. Just that momentary bounce off the turf. Pick on the outside. Works his way through. A nice job. And using their body, number 14. Backs off. Tries to get in front of the goal. And Smithfield with it still. Yes, they are. On the baseline. Working behind the goal. Pike, and that one goes wide, and it's going to stay in bounds, I think. Able to save it, number six. Right from Jesus! And to the top. Shot saved, beautiful save by Cassidy, and boy, oh boy, he's doing his best to keep this thing knotted at three. And around the back, forced to get deeper behind the goal than they want. That's the Bulldog succeeding there with Garrett Fuller in that spot. However, you can't, you might need him in front if this continues. And the pass, seven. Shot, nice save. Cassidy under fire here at the moment. And they've had to resort to putting captain number 32 behind the goal at the moment to shut down their attack. And there he is, uses his body, forces it all the way back out. And there you go. You see that that switch has worked. Let's see at what cost in front of the goal, though. And number seven will shoot from anywhere. We have Boudreaux has already showed us that. He's a senior midfielder listed us. Pass near the goal. 
Nice retreat there by Gervasini to cut that right off and make him reset. 53 seconds to go. Quarter number two. We're tied. Catch in the middle of a 15 shot. Scored. Smithfield takes the one goal lead to the right. About mid height to the back of the net. And I do believe that was number seven, Boudreaux. Uh, made his way and they were patient and, and they kept shooting until they got the shot they wanted and uh, after several saves Cassidy, Cassidy couldn't get to that one uh, you can only depend on him so much and it's been a while since I looked to the left over here into the shadows of Granite Street Bulldogs offense hasn't had it in a bit here in the middle Bulldogs will get it And to the outside, number nine for the Bulldogs. Caleb Williams to the middle. Shot. Almost answered. Big save. Bulldogs have it. They can answer quick. Shot. And he can't save it. That Bulldog knot it up just that quick. Bang, bang. Aiden Marone with his second goal of the day. Ties it up at four and makes sure momentum isn't firmly in the hands of the Sentinels at the half as the Bulldogs with the quick answer. We are knotted, boy. Boy, oh boy, put on your seatbelts for the second half. This thing is <laughs> on pace to be a roller coaster just like last season. And uh, holy smokes, what a game we have here. Wind a little gusty, I'm noticing, 25 seconds ago. And that's a lifetime here at the moment. Number 44 has it. And from behind, for the power cup, the ball hits the turf. And the Bulldog defense keeping it on the turf. Don't want to give up any more shots here at all. And from behind, Bulldogs pick it up. They take a hit to the face. He is, what is that all about over there? There has to be some semblance of a whistle, and there is. And if the officials don't reel it in, the, it will get out of hand, clearly. Especially at the end of this boy. I mean... These two teams will get to the point where they are now fans of each other. Out on the turf here in lacrosse. And we are at the half. I didn't hear the horn, but they're calling it a half. And the Bulldogs do a nice job of knotting things up at the last second. What a half we have had. Rematch from uh, last year. Bulldogs four, Smithfield four. We'll be back. Hi, this is Dan from Lathrop Insurance. In this challenging insurance environment, Lathrop Insurance can be your beacon in the storm to help you find the coverage you need at the right price. Now, more than ever, you need a partner in the insurance industry that can work with multiple carriers to make sure you have the right coverage at the right price. Lathrop Insurance carries home, auto, and business insurance and can be reached at 401-596-2525. We've been supporting the local community since 1939 and we look forward to working with you. Experience local excellence with Roof Right Roofing in Charlestown, Rhode Island. With over 40 years of unmatched expertise, Roof Right specializes in architectural shingles and holds the prestigious title of GAF Master Elite Installers. Known for their commitment to the community and support for local initiatives, Roof Right is your trusted partner for all of your home's roofing needs. Call today for a free estimate at 401 212-4140. Ever thought about leveling up your fitness game in a fun and meaningful way? Kiefer's Martial Arts on Granite Street has everything you're looking for. Kickboxing, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and of course, adult karate. It's not just about getting fit, it's about building your self-confidence, discipline, and that unstoppable feeling you get from all your hard work. Stop in to Kiefer's Martial Arts today to sign up. Are you looking for a fresh cut in Westerly? Step into Rio's Barber Shop in Granite Plaza. Whether it's a classic trim or a trendy new look, we've got you covered. Experience the perfect cut for every age and style in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. At Rio's, it's not just a haircut, it's an experience. Visit Rio's Barber Shop in the Granite Plaza in Westerly or give us a call to schedule your appointment at 401-315-2208. Your style, our craft, Rio's Barber Shop. 
Hot summers and cold winters can be unbearable, but DNV Mechanical has the solution for you. As a Mitsubishi Diamond dealer, we provide energy efficient and personalized comfort solutions for your home. Our experienced technicians will install your new system quickly and efficiently, ensuring your complete satisfaction. Don't suffer through another season of discomfort. Contact DNV Mechanical today for a personalized ductless mini split installation that fits your lifestyle. DNV Mechanical, your comfort is our top priority. The Thirsty Beaver Hometown Pub and Grub in Dunn's Corners is your ultimate destination for refreshing drinks, delectable dishes, and memorable moments with family and friends. Enjoy live music, DJ trivia every Wednesday night, and we're now the official spot to come watch and root for your favorite Westerly High School sports teams. The Thirsty Beaver, located at 265 Post Road, Spindrift Village, Westerly. What's going on, Westerly? It's Patrick down here at the Wireless Zone at Dunn's Corners, Verizon Authorized Retailer. And right now is the best time to come on in and get a brand new phone. We are offering our hottest new 5G phones, the iPhone 15, the S24, Pixel 8 for free with a trade-in. And the best part is 5G is finally coming down here to Westerly and the surrounding areas. So make sure you're on the best network and get it for free when you're on the right plan. Come see us at 224 Post Road. All right, welcome back, everybody. Sal or Jerry Field, folks. It is halftime here on top of the hill, under the lights. Friday night atmosphere, I'm telling you. Maybe not across the field in the stands, which surprises me a little bit. But, again, it's a Wednesday, and it's across the state. We have, uh, I would say, the number one clearly seated Westerly Bulldogs. And on the road, the road team here is the uh, number two seated uh, Smithfield Sentinels. Followed nearby, just like last year, uh, by the Narragansett Mariners. And early seasons proving to be the same. And it's only three games in for Smith, for both of these squads, really, uh, for everybody. Uh, but early on, the only uh, unbeaten teams in the division are the Smith, the Bulldogs, Smithfield, and the Mariners. The Bulldogs playing Smithfield right here. They got one day off, and then they get to play the Mariners. So early back-to-back -back barometer check here for the Bulldogs. This thing started out Smithfield, Smithfield. 2 nothing right off the bat. Uh, but the Bulldogs did not fold, did not get intimidated, uh, came right back and uh, I believe brought it, took the lead, three in a row, three to two, and uh, then it's been back and forth ever since. The Bulldogs with the late goal uh, in the half, and I think that could be huge. That's what knotted it back up here at four. Uh, there's uh, just under four minutes left in the half. The Bulldogs will start warming up again pretty soon after they make uh, what adjustments need to be made. They're doing a nice job here. They're playing the quality club defense, defense, defense. Um, a few mishaps, honestly. And uh, I think the Bulldogs would have the lead at this point. Uh, but what we're seeing is top tier lacrosse. If you're not familiar, folks, these two teams did meet in the state championship. Electric, electrifying game at Brown Stadium. I was there. Nine to eight victory. Uh, they met last season in the regular season. Uh, wouldn't you know it, Wesley beat them 9-8 to eight in overtime. Uh, so don't tell me that Smithfield's not bitter. Uh, one goal separating them twice, once for a state championship. Uh, they came in ready to play, and uh, we're getting what we expected. Uh, it's dead even here. It's early in the season, so you're going to expect as the season progresses to get better. So uh, late, late in the season, if these two teams uh, meet again, it could be a whole new show. That being said, uh, it'll be interesting to see see what adjustments the coaches made in this chess game as the Sentinels are still over in the corner. Bulldogs trickling their way back uh, onto the sidelines here. And uh, I am the voice, Greg Morano, alongside the Eyes Behind the Lens, Lisa, and we have Ben Barber and Dave DeAndres, producers and owners. We are 3-2-1 Westerly. And before the half, I want to make one announcement here. Uh, I was supposed to make it in uh, the first half at some point. I didn't. Um, just so we know, we all know Rico Spazzato here. If you're from Wesley, if you're a student as well, um, his senior project is a flag football alumni tournament. And all the benefits go to the American Cancer Society. Uh, it's $5 per spectator. First 30 spectators get $5 Dunkin' Donuts card. Uh, the date is April 20th, 4 p.m. All proceeds and donations will be donated to the American Cancer Society. Uh, text call 401-443-7324 for any questions. Again, Rico Spazzato, two-way alignment. Uh, middle of the Bulldogs offensive and defensive line uh, for his entire high school career. Great guy as well. This is uh, his senior project, flag football alumni tournament. 
all proceeds going to the American Cancer Society. That's on April 20th. Uh, all looks like it's going to be a great Saturday afternoon, evening. I am super excited. I'm going to be there broadcasting out loud on the field. And uh, a lot of my friends, a lot of former players, it's just going to be so much fun watching them get back on the field and do it. Uh, I do believe it's flag football tournament, and it's just going to be great. So that being said, we are back on the field, ready to go. In the middle, big number 44, Tremblay had a good half for Smithfield. And number two, Gervasini had a great, Michael Gervasini had a great start for the Bulldogs. And... Ball on the ground near the far side, loose. Smithfield has it. Smithfield in the green going right to left. And Bulldogs keeping them out. And this is going to be a physical half of the cross, folks. Have no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And over the middle, the pass behind the goal. He likes to make his way around. The Bulldogs done a nice job, and that's great defense over there by Garofolo, keeping him out and popping the ball loose. And a whistle is called. Blown. And that is going to be against. I don't know, just a substitution here? I don't know what's going on. I'm guessing that Smithfield has it here. That was on the Bulldogs, and Smithfield will immediately be back on attack. And spin move to the baseline. He's going to try to find his way to the middle, and there's a Bulldog in the way to the ground. He goes, but they get the shot off a quick rifle to the left side of the goal. But it's blown off. That's going to go to Westerly's side, so scratch that goal real quick and uh, take a deep breath if you're Westerly. Restart the half here. Cesaro has it. And a big hit by the Smithfield defense and then a big stick move. Boy, oh boy, they're here to play, folks. Westerly has the answers. They just got to use it. They can be just as physical. Ball hits the ground, though. Scooped up this time. Number 22 has it for the Bulldogs. Ian Morissette. And it is... It's the Bulldogs and Smithfield at the moment. Smithfield fans are uh, also intermixed in with the Bulldogs. Fans picked off number two, Gervasini. And he makes a move, spin move to the inside. Defense collapses, he stays with it. Couple moves, though, and uh, there's three defenders. Ball scooped up again by Gervasini. So they do change possession. Bulldogs have it. Great job, again, by the Smithfield D of collapsing. And Bulldogs weren't able to get a shot off right then, but they do have possession. Great play by number two. Forget that uh, Jefferson is only a sophomore. And here we go to the middle more set. He's got a lane shot. And nice save by the uh, Smithfield goalie. Number one, Dalton Donnie, and has had a good day here. And Morissette has it. Almost had a pick set shot. Beautiful save. Wow, two in a row. And it's a loose ball. Bulldogs have it again. And under fire is Smithfield at the moment. I love it. Bulldogs offense stripped from behind this time, though. And up is Smithfield comes with it. And he is moving quick. Length of the field he goes from behind. Fazzaro unable to knock it loose. And Smithfield again has this time they got to. Uh oh, he uh, faked him out a little bit, found a lane, contact, save. Big hit there, nice hit, nice job in the middle by the Bulldogs defense. And the Bulldogs will get the ball, so nice job as Garofolo will inbound it for Westerly. So fireworks right off the bat here, we have uh, a little bit higher velocity ball game here. A little more physical. Crowd's a little louder, less time here now. We got nine minutes to go, quarter number three, and uh, not at four. I mean, this is almost a parallel to last season. This is crazy. Westerly is clearly improving game to game, and uh, that's their goal, obviously, this season. And Smithfield uh, comes in, obviously, has earned their 3 0 record, 2 0 in the league. Jerusini with it. On top. And now it's number 22. The freshman weapon, Morissette, with it. Turns inside, underhand shot, and that gets kicked. 
And he picks it back up in. Uh, so I'm trying to tap corralled by the goalie whistle. And it's going to go. Gives Wesley, it looks like. So we are live. Bulldogs have it over the top. And rifles from the top, just over the top. And uh, the Bulldogs will maintain possession from behind. Morissette spins back to the goal, works his way to the far side, flips it ahead, down coming shot. And a nice one timer. Good idea set up by Morissette. Again, the Bulldogs will retain possession. And he has, where we are here, I circled. The one number I circled on all the stats was that's seven. Seven assists. And that's a big number. Shot. And another big save. And he thought he had it, Warren. And he did not. And number 12 on the scene for the Bulldogs. Alex Lozzi picks it up, pass to the middle, and stripped from behind again. And fortunately for Smithfield, they were able to get to it. And again, Gervasini starts things over for the Bulldogs. And we're on the near side. It's number 20. Matthew Horn. Horn scored a lot of goals for the Bulldogs last season. And that is going to ricochet out of bounds. Bulldogs look to retain it, and they will. Horn has it behind the goal. As he flips it forward, Morissette. And it falls loose, scoops, and it gives him a lane. A natural little one, but they collapse. And bam, they are aggressive underneath. It's like see it us. Hence the 4-4 four four score. Pass. Horton can't handle it. And that misstep will cost them the possession unless he can get it back on the ground. And he does. Tries to redeem himself. Now this time the flag flies. Uh, those swings are a little high. And uh, you'll hear the whistle if he can get a stick on the ball at least to thwart this possession. On the run, Smithfield has it being backed by a penalty, I believe. And, and nice job there. Uh, Forcing Smithfield into using it. Smithfield will retain possession, I believe. But that was a nice job of the Bulldogs forcing the penalty. And multiple substitutions. Harden back out. Wondering if he's 100% today. Oh, no, excuse me. He did get whistled. All right. And some dead time here. 7.03 to go. Quarter number three. This is 3-2-1 Wesley bringing you top flight lacrosse here. Bulldogs welcoming the number two seed coming into the season. Their opponent in last year's state championship, the Smithfield Sentinels, and they have come ready to play. They are reloaded. The Bulldogs are reloaded. Bulldogs looking to repeat. And Smithfield looking for revenge. And hence, the, uh, we have a knotted matchup at four. And ball hits the turf here. Bulldogs try to come up with it. And nice job there by Samuel Brimlow. And Bulldogs are on the run here. This is number 13 for Zaro. Crosses the field with it. Flips it. And a loose ball. They had a chance at a shot there. Trying to scoop on the move. Stick goes down. Player goes down. Bounce pass. The ball is loose. Squirts out. Bulldogs should scoop it up, and they do. Number 22, Ian Morissette. On the movie goes. And they reset here halfway through quarter, number three. And an animated, there's a lot of people in front of me. I think it's a mixed, like I said, it's a mixed crowd down below me here. And uh, from outside, William shot. And that is deflected. Hasn't had an opportunity, hasn't been able to work his way inside much this game yet, Williams. And the pass this time, he's got a lane. Morissette in one move, shot, and a nice save. And nice move by Morissette, nice save. Bulldogs will have possession, though. And again, the Bulldogs, number 34, Aiden Marone, having a day. Not only his two goals, he's had a day. On the attack, all in all, and right there, you see it as he scoops up the loose ball. 
and he works his way around. Late pass, more set, and he can't get quite enough possession to fling it forward. Might have been better served just to take the shot, and that pass goes high, uh, but uh, it's going to stay with Smithfield over midfield. And the Sentinels flipping around the perimeter at the moment here. Oh, top shot. Top right corner. Tough spot to stop. Cassidy was up there, but just over his shoulder. Uh, for right now, the goal that separates the two. And back and forth we go. I mean, it's been one for one, one for the other. And at the moment, Smithfield with the 5-4 to four lead here at Ojiri Field. Fear not, it's one goal. And uh, teams are going to need, I have a feeling... If, Right around where they were last year. Maybe that number nine is just a magic number, but I think they're going to be right around there. Uh, the team that wins are right around there, eight or nine number. But who knows? Either of these teams is capable of exploding. I mean, they really are. In the middle, Perkins fighting for it is still on the ground. And the scrum. Bulldogs come away with it on the run. And again on the ground. Loose. Neither team can grab it. This one's going to come away. The Bulldogs aren't going to grab this one. Perkins has it. And have a little team meeting there. Number 22 with it. Ian Morissette. Works his way to the middle. Flips to the side. Caleb Williams. Far corner. And he gives it up immediately. On the move. Morissette trying to create something. And in the middle, loses it. And I'm not sure if that was to him or if it was trying to get to the wing to Williams. Nevertheless, Smithfield comes away with it. Number nine to the middle. That's deflected out, and it's going to go in the Bulldogs' favor. So Smithfield... After this one, not that it matters, they have a non-leaguer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They have a three-day break. Bulldogs don't have that same fortune. They have one day and then another huge league matchup versus Narragansett. So this doesn't go their way. They got to get get over themselves, get over it real quick in one day and then be ready for a big one. But they would much rather come off a win and look for another. And the shot. Deflected wide, I do believe, or to just go wide, and it'll stay with the Bulldogs. Division three right now, there is three teams unbeaten. The uh, Bulldogs are only 1-0 in the league. They're 2-0 and overall. The Mariners are technically above them by one. They're 2-0 and in the league, 2-0 and overall, and this Smithfield team is 3-0 and in the league, 3-0 and overall. This is uh, their fourth league game. That's very weird, but that is the numbers I came across at, on every platform. Now, they, all three of their games to start were league. Uh, probably why they're sneaking in a game versus Attleboro next week, which is uh, in Rhode Island. That's a heck of a schedule you're able to make for yourselves. Uh, you play yourself and gets the worst into the best team in the league, Wesley, and then you give yourself kind of a non-leaguer, a bias, and not a buy, but a game you don't have to worry about as much as the Mariners in a day. So slide schedule is smart. In the middle of the set, creates space and makes it look easy. Bobs and weaves his way through that defense and uh, makes that shot to the top right easy, knocks it back up. Bulldogs back on this thing and wakes the crowd back up. And boy, oh boy, he might be able to wiggle through a hole in a, in a, with a football in his hand. You never know. Avoids contact very well and tacks on a, the tying goal for the Bulldogs. And we got a game. Boy, this is fun stuff. In the middle, number 44. For Tremblay for the Smithfield, and he comes away with it, the senior. The senior versus sophomore, something that... Bulldogs last season uh, beat Narragansett twice. Tough games, 10 to 6 in one of them. 
And Smithfield working their way around the goal, Granite Street side of the field here. We are on top of the hill on this Wednesday night, 321 Wesley, bringing you boys varsity lacrosse early, early in the season, as big of a game as can be early on in the year. I mean, the revenge factor gives a huge motivational precursor to the Smithfield, that's for sure. The Bulldogs, however, would certainly like to keep that unbeaten league streak going. Works his way through the middle, and nice save by Cassidy, as a uh, nice job getting an open shot by Smithfield. Loose ball in the middle, fights it again. Another nice save, deflection. That time it was for Garofola. So that's the importance of having Garofola in front, too. I know he's doing a great job behind, but you wish you could have him in both spots. And 14 again with it for the Bulldogs. Logan starts, gets hit, loses it, and number seven with it. Makes one move, and starts hits him, and forces an off shot. Nice shot by starts to get back in that play and off to the shot. Didn't quit on the play, didn't get frustrated. Uh, he did a nice job of playing forward. And Smithfield with the inbound. And we are in with it now in the far corner. And trying to make a move. I don't think they're going to have much success over there. And they work it, however, and behind the goal. Garofalo on him. Makes a move to the far side. Cuts back to the near. And forced back out. That's generally what happens when you get to the personnel area in the Bulldogs defense. You are forced out and the Bulldogs forced a turnover. So, Bulldogs will head from left to right and hopefully get on the attack here for a bit. And in front of the goal, almost deflected, but Bulldogs able to scoop it up and it comes loose again. And nice scoop by the Bulldogs. Williams over there, nice job. And now Michael Gervasini with it. And looking for space. Comes near side, Horton. Flips behind, nice pass, nice shot. Oh, man. Off the crossbar, was it? And we have a whistle that stopped play. And are they giving him a go? What are they doing here? Someone's cheering. We have hands up. Someone wants to call that a goal, I think. And it is a goal for the Bulldogs. Holy smokes up top. It moved the net and bounced back out. And that is official. And that is, that's a great job officiating when you're that confident. You saw it to come in here with 20 seconds in quarter number three. And uh, the Bulldogs' sixth goal of the day. That's two in a row here, and they take the lead back. I wish I could uh, think back to how many lead changes there's been in this thing, because it is uh, more than a few by a lot. So the Bulldogs with a 6-5 to five advantage 20 seconds ago in quarter number three. And that woke the crowd up if they were asleep. And nice D by the Bulldogs. Bulldogs defense, man, is no joke. They are tough to get through. This Smithfield team is no joke. I mean, we have a 6-5 to five game here, and neither team will relent to the middle. Get the chance and ties it. And man, oh man, one second to go. What a dagger. Boy, oh boy, it's a good thing it's the third and not the fourth. And, man, they scored, oh, boy, two in the second quarter in the last 33 seconds, one with 11 seconds left, and uh, one with one second left in the third. Three goals in the final 45 seconds of two quarters, man. That's hard to take. But, boy, oh, boy, I'm going to have a lozenger and a big sip of water between quarters here because uh, it's going to be a high-volume fourth. Westerly, six. Smithfield, six. Three quarters in the books. Exactly what we had expected and hoped for, folks. Today, we're going to take a quick break and bring you quarter number four.
Your number four, South Lawn Jerry Field, Bulldogs versus Smithfield. Folks, it doesn't get more bitter of a rivalry than they haven't been developing since last season, let me tell you. And I haven't looked back further than that. Last year, these two teams played to two 9-8 to eight Bulldog victories, one of which was the state championship. Holy cow, folks, we got a 6-6 six six tie here at South Lawn Jerry Field. There have been multiple lead changes, and uh, we are in the middle, in the square circle here for quarter number four. The Bulldogs give up the tying goal with one second remaining in quarter number three. Let's keep that in the back of our minds and uh, watch how this fourth plays out, folks. The Sentinels have it in the middle. Nice pass, nice defense by the Bulldogs. Big defense, big hit. He lifted his stick there, no whistle. That's a crazy. That's going to set the tune. They were there a little late. That's going to set the tone for uh, what could be an ugly quarter of no allowing that. And I don't know why he called it so late. It took a long, long time, but if in the first juncture you allow that hit, boy, oh boy, I feel bad. Nice pass in the middle, and shot, score! Bulldogs answer, bang! Just like that! That goal with one second left didn't deter them at all. They needed to score the water, deep breath, and let's go for quarter number four. Westerly seven, Smithfield six, 11.27 to go. And uh, I don't know where momentum is. I say momentum's with the home team and momentum's with the team who's won the last two. Momentum's with the reigning state champs at this point. You win, you're winning by one in the fourth quarter at home. You got the home crowd advantage. Everyone's on their feet. I mean, there can't be two better match teams. I'll tell you that over the course of two years. We have a timeout on the field. It's, uh, it's too late to let too much time go by if you're a coach for this chess match of this magnitude. 321 Wesley, take a quick break and be right back. Hi, this is Dan from Lathrop Insurance. In this challenging insurance environment, Lathrop Insurance can be your beacon in the storm to help you find the coverage you need at the right price. Now, more than ever, you need a partner in the insurance industry that can work with multiple carriers to make sure you have the right coverage at the right price. Lathrop Insurance carries home, auto, and business insurance and can be reached at 401-596-2525. We've been supporting the local community since 1939, and we look forward to working with you. Experience local excellence with Roof Right Roofing in Charlestown, Rhode Island. With over 40 years of unmatched expertise, Roof Right specializes in architectural shingles and holds the prestigious title of GAF Master Elite Installers. Known for their commitment to the community and support for local initiatives, RoofRight is your trusted partner for all of your home's roofing needs. Call today for a free estimate at 401-212-4140. Ever thought about leveling up your fitness game in a fun and meaningful way? Kiefer's Martial Arts on Granite Street has everything you're looking for. Kickboxing, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and of course, adult karate. It's not just about getting fit, it's about building your self-confidence, discipline, and that unstoppable feeling you get from all your hard work. Stop in to Kiefer's Martial Arts today to sign up. Are you looking for a fresh cut in Westerly? Step into Rio's Barber Shop in Granite Plaza. Whether it's a classic trim or a trendy new look, we've got you covered. Experience the perfect cut for every age and style in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. At Rio's, it's not just a haircut, it's an experience. Visit Rio's Barber Shop in the Granite Plaza in Westerly or give us a call to schedule your appointment at 401-315-2208. Your style, our craft, Rio's Barber Shop. Hot summers and cold winters can be unbearable, but DNV Mechanical has the solution for you. As a Mitsubishi Diamond dealer, we provide energy efficient and personalized comfort solutions for your home. Our experienced technicians will install your new system quickly and efficiently, ensuring your complete satisfaction. Don't suffer through another season of discomfort. Contact DNV Mechanical today for a personalized ductless mini split installation that fits your lifestyle. DNV Mechanical, your comfort is our top priority. The Thirsty Beaver Hometown Pub and Grub in Dunn's Corners is your ultimate destination for refreshing drinks, delectable dishes, and memorable moments with family and friends. Enjoy live music, DJ trivia every Wednesday night, and we're now the official spot to come watch and root for your favorite Westerly High School sports teams. 
The Thirsty Beaver, located at 265 Post Road, Spindrift Village, Westerly. What's going on, Westerly? It's Patrick down here at the Wireless Zone at Dunn's Corners, Verizon Authorized Retailer. And right now is the best time to come on in and get a brand new phone. We are offering our hottest new 5G phone, the iPhone 15, the S24, Pixel 8 for free with a trade-in. And the best part is, 5G is finally coming down here to Westerly and the surrounding areas. So make sure you're on the best network and get it for free when you're on the right plan. Come see us at 224 Post Road. All right, all right, all right, and welcome back, folks. This is Electric on Turf is what we're watching when these two teams come to play. Bulldogs, Smithfield, 7-6, to six, quarter four. <laughs> Past two games being 9-8, to eight, man. This game is lining up really close here to that same score. It's uh, crazy how these two teams match up. Nevertheless, there has been multiple lead changes, scoring within seconds of each other. 11 and a half minutes to go as the Bulldogs take the field. I I want to take this opportunity one more time to announce about Rico Spazzato's Senior Project. It's a flag football alumni tournament, folks, and it's going to be a fantastic show here right on this field, the Salo Jerry Field, April 20th. Goes to a great cause. All proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. Five dollars per person. First thirty spectators get a five dollar Dunkin' Donuts card. Again, April twentieth, four p.m. Right here, we're going to see some great uh, friends, some great faces it's on the field. It's just going to be a great time. So uh, make sure you try to go ahead and get there for that. And now, as uh, both teams almost went on the field and returned for a moment. 11.27 to go. Uh, this has taken every bit of what each team has uh, early in the season. They really, they really have. Uh, both teams have played a great game. Uh, defensively, uh, this team's no joke. I'll tell you right now, Smithfield, uh, all credit in the world to them. They belong uh, right where they're at, uh, at this juncture within a goal of this Bulldog squad. At the same time, this thing can flip within seconds. We've seen it happen already tonight. Smithfield, uh, what I'm not, what I'm surprised to see is breaking the huddle and walk out of the field. Uh, but they have been playing 100 miles an hour since the opening whistle, since the middle. Uh, and the Bulldogs doing a nice job in the middle. I don't know what the phase off count is, but I know it's been primarily Gervasini. Uh, Perkins has taken a couple, and uh, they, they've been playing versus number 44, Trembley, a senior attackman, big guy. And they, they did a nice job of holding their own. Uh, now they're employing uh, number fives out there, Zachary Rose, another senior. Gervasini gets that, gets the ball on the ground, loose. No one's got it, kicking it, kicking it, and Williams gets whistled for something. And Smithfield is going to get it on the move, and that is where he's going to go. Excuse me, Bulldogs have it on the move. Deflect it away. And number two right there for the shot for the Bulldogs, Michael Gervasini. Heard that name a lot. Flips it around. Shot, pass shot and a goal would be huge here if the Bulldogs can get just one goal to breathe with. They have possession again here. And a flip to the middle gets through. And the Bulldogs are going to scoop it up. That's Williams. And Smithfield's paid a lot of attention to him tonight. They've done a nice job. Bulldogs have it near the goal. In front, shot, and that is deflected by the Smithfield goalie. Another nice save. Under fire right now, the Bulldogs offense doing their thing. Around the back of the goal, flip forward, another shot. Pass, excuse me, underhand shot. What an assist. What a pass and what a shot for the underhanded. Well, looked effortless. And the score, number 22, Ian Morissette with the beautiful underhand shot for the Bulldogs. And I, I keep looking up, making sure this kid's a freshman. Well, man, oh, man, he's a talented passer. But he had to be faked out on the pass. I thought he was trying some soft type of shot, but with, with uh, de <laughs> as delicate as he needed to be, that assist was. And Morissette with a beautiful shot. Bulldogs, eight. Smithfield six. Now that gives Bulldogs momentum. And let's see what they can do with it. Still, still not out of reach of the Smithfield team. They scored two in extremely short periods of time already here tonight. But this uh, 
Bulldog crowd is alive. Loose ball. Now those balls I was mentioning hitting the turf one time for the Bulldogs, they shored that up. Their passes got a lot better. And uh, Smithfield, now I credit the Bulldogs defense, but has had the yips with the balls hitting the ground like that one time. The pressure fully on the green now. The state champion imposing their presence. Every time Smithfield either had the lead or knocked on the door, the Bulldogs have answered all night long with new faces, as you've heard the likes of uh, the contributions by uh, Michael Gervasini, Ian Morissette, and there's other names as well. Caleb Williams, only a sophomore, used to be Bart last year as well. Excuse me. And behind the goal that goes, the whistle, and it's going to go in favor of the Bulldogs. So the Bulldogs will have possession. Matthew Garofolda will inbound behind the goal, flips it forward. Fazzaro has it. Across the middle now, the Bulldogs make their way. And Gervasini flips near side. Williams. Bulldogs have it centered. Fazzaro's got it. Occupies two defenders. Flips it back and it hits the turf briefly. Gervasini has it. Bulldogs on offense here. Way too much time. They're not thinking eat the clocks, but also no need to uh, rush things. And underhand shot from long range. That bounces its way in off the goalie. Michael Gervasini catches him sleeping. And wow, what an underhand shot. And boy, this Bulldogs artillery has a lot of weapons. And that was a big one there, boy. This game was... Uh, what was it? Five, six to five? Smithfield and the Bulldogs have scored four in a row now for the largest goal streak in this contest and no better time to do it than uh, here at the end of the third going into the fourth. It is nine to six for Bulldogs lead. And as I said, they trailed six to five. And or seven to six, they trailed by one at some point. Nevertheless, I am laser focused on this Smithfield offense who starts to feel the vice gripping a little bit. And as you see, things like that. A simple pass and it kind of sneaks by your heads ahead of your arms. And uh, the Bulldogs defense has really, Bulldogs entire team, including clearly including Cassidy, has done just a uh, unbelievable job for such an early season matchup. And look at the physicality. There is no room to shoot. Able to scoop it up. Spin after spin after spin. And holy smokes, he keeps with it. And scores. And man, oh man. Laser-like fashion. And how he uh, kept spinning and held his balance. The Sentinel team, no quit whatsoever. It is 9-7. to seven. We have eight minutes to go. And there is plenty of time in this thing. Well, those offense would love to answer. Nine for Westerly, seven for Smithfield. Quarter number four, eight minutes to go here at Tallow Jerry Field. Back in the squared circle, Jermasini for the Bulldog. And you can definitely feel and see the sense of just uh, <laughs> revenge on the end of uh, Smithfield. And just the rivalry that has been created and grown here in lacrosse between these two titans here in Division 3. And in the middle, Bulldogs, too many sticks in the way. Great D. And the Sentinels have to reel it in, and they'll get started again. Two goals separate them. Uh, the number of goal changes is, is incredible. I wish I had known it was going to be that many. I would have tallied them up going fourth here. I should have known. I knew it was going to be a tough matchup uh, early season. And the Bulldogs have it on the move. Fataro's got it. And number 34 shot. And nice save for the Bulldogs. Moreau wanted to add another one. Having a day all over the field offensively for the Bulldogs is Aiden Moreau. Not just scoring the two or more he has. And behind the back pass. And he's unable to finish. What a save by Cassidy. What an assist attempt by the Sentinels. And holy smokes, that was high caliber across right there on both ends. Well, a really, really good play it took to stop that from being a score. That one almost had me speechless. 
Smithfield with it. Behind the goal, back in front. And they rotate around here. We are approaching the halfway mark in quarter number four. Of a game that has been everything that it was deemed out to be, everything that you'd hope for. That contact created a little room. Way too many Bulldogs in the way. And a ground shot saved by Cassidy. He has it and flips it forward. Uh, will flip it forward. Nice job. Gets it to Garofola as there's a little bit of a hit on Cassidy. And there will be a whistle. And that is going to be out of bounds against the Bulldogs, I do believe. We'll wait until this thing comes to... So Cassidy did take a big hit. Popped up. He is okay. Sentinels will have possession here in a two-point game. Two-goal game. I didn't just say that. That did not happen. Six minutes ago, quarter number four. And the Sentinels moving around here. Sentinels were down by three. They made it two. And the seconds tick. Still more than enough time. Big number 44 with a big game. And he's got great balance to be able to get some of the shots off. Bulldogs able to get it to pop up. And nice stick save by Cassidy, who... Makes his way out of the goal again, and we have an open goal here with a lot of Sentinels in the way, and Cassidy is a whistle. That happened once earlier in the game, and the Sentinels were able to capitalize. And inbounds to Cassidy again, and he'll flip it forward, and the Bulldog Gerasini has it across midfield. And Drew has got it. Obviously. Whistle. Timeout, Bulldogs. On the field. Good time for a timeout. Not much happening either way at that moment. 5.05 to go. Quarter number four, folks. It doesn't get more exciting than this. The score is nine for the Bulldogs, seven for the Sentinels. We'll take a quick break and be back with the final action. Two quick goals, uh, a number, a big number of goal changes in this thing. Back and forth, back and forth. The Bulldogs down six to five, I believe it was, with a big four goal surge. Smithfield able to answer it with one. We stand nine to seven as the Bulldogs and Smithfield break the huddle as we play the last 5.05 to go in the fourth quarter. The Bulldogs now have one day off and then they head to Narragansett. Narragansett's two and oh. Smithfield, on the other hand, has three days off and heads to a non-league or so. This is a big three-day span for the Bulldogs, and uh, it doesn't get any better than this. 3-2-1 Wesley bringing it to you. Early season electricity at Salwa Jerry Field. And I'll tell you what, some may look at this team as a young Bulldog team. Uh, I disagree with their caliber, boy. Let me tell you, yeah, I guess they might be young, but they are thousand Over the middle, quick answer, and what a save again. Almost a quick answer, I should say. Great passing out of the gates. Bulldogs able to keep it in bounds. It's loose on the ground. Hard to see over that white out there exactly how far out they are. Hard to hear the whistle way over there. I just go by direction, and that's the right direction at the moment, I think. And the Bulldogs have it. 
Michael Gervasini in the middle. They've kept Way uh, Williams out of a lot of shooting opportunity here today. But he's done a lot away from the ball that uh, stays out of that stat category. Bulldogs again with a two goal lead. We are now down to four minutes. A W and E by any amount is all you want out of this thing. They have laid it on the line. They have played with everything they've got. And with the move, Cesaro tries to dump it inside. Williams has it. And the pick from Cesaro, does that give him space? He's going to wait, shoot, save. And what a day, number one. He's also had Dalton Dinoyan. He's given up nine, but he's had a million more goalie flings that it's loose. And they have it on the far side, but they're going to wait. They're going to wait for the Bulldogs to uh, catch up. And here we go. Three and a half to go. It ticks away fast. The vice gets tighter if you're Smithfield. Boy, I have the Bulldogs stepped up here early in the season. Hi, this is Dan from Lathrop Insurance. In this challenging insurance environment, Lathrop Insurance can be your beacon in the storm to help you find the coverage you need at the right price. Now, more than ever, you need a partner in the insurance industry that can work with multiple carriers to make sure you have the right coverage at the right price. Lathrop Insurance carries home, auto, and business insurance and can be reached at 401-596-2525. We've been supporting the local community since 1939 and we look forward to working with you. Experience local excellence with Roof Right Roofing in Charlestown, Rhode Island. With over 40 years of unmatched expertise, Roof Right specializes in architectural shingles and holds the prestigious title of GAF Master Elite Installers. Known for their commitment to the community and support for local initiatives, Roof Right is your trusted partner for all of your home's roofing needs. Call today for a free estimate at 401-212-4140. Ever thought about leveling up your fitness game in a fun and meaningful way? Kiefer's Martial Arts on Granite Street has everything you're looking for. Kickboxing, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and of course, adult karate. It's not just about getting fit, it's about building your self-confidence, discipline, and that unstoppable feeling you get from all your hard work. Stop in to Kiefer's Martial Arts today to sign up. Are you looking for a fresh cut in Westerly? Step into Rio's Barber Shop in Granite Plaza. Whether it's a classic trim or a trendy new look, we've got you covered. Experience the perfect cut for every age and style in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. At Rio's, it's not just a haircut, it's an experience. Visit Rio's Barber Shop in the Granite Plaza in Westerly or give us a call to schedule your appointment at 401-315-2208. Your style, our craft, Rio's Barber Shop. Hot summers and cold winters can be unbearable, but DNV Mechanical has the solution for you. As a Mitsubishi Diamond dealer, we provide energy efficient and personalized comfort solutions for your home. Our experienced technicians will install your new system quickly and efficiently, ensuring your complete satisfaction. Don't suffer through another season of discomfort. Contact DNV Mechanical today for a personalized ductless mini split installation that fits your lifestyle. DNV Mechanical, your comfort is our top priority. The Thirsty Beaver Hometown Pub and Grub in Dunn's Corners is your ultimate destination for refreshing drinks, delectable dishes, and memorable moments with family and friends. Enjoy live music, DJ trivia every Wednesday night, and we're now the official spot to come watch and root for your favorite Westerly High School sports teams. The Thirsty Beaver, located at 265 Post Road, Spindrift Village, Westerly. Bring the kids, bring grandma and grandpa, heck, bring everyone and come to the Meskwamikit Spring Fest in Westerly, May 10th, 11th, and 12th at Meskwamikit State Beach. You'll find an array of great food trucks, arts and craft vendors, games, rides, and a Ferris wheel with panoramic views. Friday night is John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band kicking off a weekend of great music on the main stage. It's time for summer at Meskwamikit Beach with Spring Fest, Meskwamikit.org. Welcome back to the 
finale of a regular season high school lacrosse game here at Wesley of the Ages. I am the voice, Greg Moran, alongside Lisa Behind the Lens. We got producer owners Ben Barber and Dave DeAngelis. We are 3-2-1 Wesley, bringing it to you from Salo or Jerry Field. Folks, it doesn't get any better than this. This score is exactly what the score was in the regular season when Wesley beat them last year and in the state championship. I don't think the scoring is over. The Bulldogs at the moment, 9-8 lead, buck 24 to go. Holy smokes. And it's loose on the ground in the middle. Smithfield has it. What a game we have on our hands. How hard these two teams have played. Absolutely no give up in either squad. No give. These teams are this even. And have been for this being the second year, clearly. And number six with it for Smithfield. Kavanaugh and works his way around. Number 15 flips it over the top. He gets through some sticks, but no shot. Long shot. Saved by, Cass by uh, Cassidy. And the ball is loose, and it's up. Bulldogs trying to get it out of there. And Smithfield, it is on the ground again, but Smithfield keeps the pressure on. And from the baseline, and what a save by Cassidy. He closes down the corner and uses his body, and there's a whistle on the ground, and the Bulldogs get the benefit of that call. 31 ticks to go. 31 ticks to go. Holy smokes, here we go. And in the middle of the field, we got it. Here. It is Gervasini on site all game long. And he's got it. We're down to 20 seconds. The Bulldogs have it. Williams. He's going to make a move to the baseline. All they got to do is kill 15 seconds. They have given up goals in 11 and 1. Behind the goal they go. There's little that Smithfield can do at the moment. We are at 7 seconds to go. And it's up on the top. Gervasini has it in no better hands. And the Bulldogs for the third time in a row beat the Sentinels of Smithfield by the exact score of 9 to 8 including a state championship. And man oh man new season. Same results. Look at the celebration. The emotions on hand. Folks it's only the third game of the season. Wow this was fun. Fireworks here tonight, and as I always say, the best place to be when these guys are playing all on the line for both teams. Couldn't have been better, more couldn't have been more exciting. Oh, it's an anomaly. I can't believe the score worked out, but these two teams are this evening. I will not be in the least bit surprised if they meet again. Uh, you can't get any more excitement for a game three of a regular season. I'll tell you that right now. This was an absolute fireworks. Congratulations to both teams. Uh, and uh, <laughs> great game by Wesley. This is uh, the voice, Greg Moreno. This is 3-2-1 Wesley. And we're signing off until uh, Friday. More action for you. We'll see the lacrosse team again here at O'Jerry Field on the 16th versus Tollgate. And that's all I got. Signing off. Hi, this is Dan from Lathrop Insurance. In this challenging insurance environment, Lathrop Insurance can be your beacon in the storm to help you find the coverage you need at the right price. Now, more than ever, you need a partner in the insurance industry that can work with multiple carriers to make sure you have the right coverage at the right price. Lathrop Insurance carries home, auto, and business insurance and can be reached at 401-596-2525. We've been supporting the local community since 1939 and we look forward to working with you. What's going on, Wesley? It's Patrick down here at the Wireless Zone at Dunn's Corners Verizon Authorized Retailer. And right now is the best time to come on in and get a brand new phone. We are offering our hottest new 5G phones, the iPhone 15, the S24, Pixel 8 for free with a trade-in. And the best part is, 5G is finally coming down here to Westerly and the surrounding areas. So make sure you're on the best network and get it for free when you're on the right plan. Come see us at 224 Post Road. Ever thought about leveling up your fitness game in a fun and meaningful way? Kiefer's Martial Arts on Granite Street has everything you're looking for. Kickboxing, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and of course, adult karate. It's not just about getting fit, it's about building your self-confidence, discipline, and that unstoppable feeling you get from all your hard work. Stop in to Kiefer's Martial Arts today to sign up. 
Hot summers and cold winters can be unbearable, but DNV Mechanical has the solution for you. As a Mitsubishi Diamond dealer, we provide energy efficient and personalized comfort solutions for your home. Our experienced technicians will install your new system quickly and efficiently, ensuring your complete satisfaction. Don't suffer through another season of discomfort. Contact DNV Mechanical today for a personalized ductless mini split installation that fits your lifestyle. DNV Mechanical, your comfort is our top priority. The Thirsty Beaver Hometown Pub and Grub in Dunn's Corners is your ultimate destination for refreshing drinks, delectable dishes, and memorable moments with family and friends. Enjoy live music, DJ trivia every Wednesday night, and we're now the official spot to come watch and root for your favorite Westerly High School sports teams. The Thirsty Beaver, located at 265 Post Road, Spindrift Village, Westerly. Are you looking for a fresh cut in Westerly? Step into Rio's Barber Shop in Granite Plaza. Whether it's a classic trim or a trendy new look, we've got you covered. Experience the perfect cut for every age and style in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. At Rio's, it's not just a haircut, it's an experience. Visit Rio's Barber Shop in the Granite Plaza in Westerly or give us a call to schedule your appointment at 401-315-2208. Your style, our craft, Rio's Barber Shop. Experience local excellence with Roof Right Roofing in Charlestown, Rhode Island. With over 40 years of unmatched expertise, Roof Right specializes in architectural shingles and holds the prestigious title of GAF Master Elite Installers. Known for their commitment to the community and support for local initiatives, Roof Right is your trusted partner for all of your home's roofing needs. Call today for a free estimate at 401-212-4140. Bring the kids, bring grandma and grandpa, heck, bring everyone and come to the Meskwamikit Spring Fest in Westerly, May 10th, 11th, and 12th at Meskwamikit State Beach. You'll find an array of great food trucks, arts and craft vendors, games, rides, and a Ferris wheel with panoramic views. Friday night is John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band kicking off a weekend of great music on the main stage. It's time for summer at Meskwamikit Beach with Spring Fest, Meskwamikit.org. <laughs> 